we stood still. For the first time did we know fear, and then pain. And we stood still that we might not spill this pain more precious than pleasure. Then we heard a voice from the others call their name. Liberty 5 3000. Thus we learned their name, and we stood watching them go, till their white tunic was in the blue mist. And the following day, as we came to the northern road, we kept our eyes upon Liberty 5 3000 in the field. And each day thereafter, we knew the illness of waiting for our hour on the northern road. We know not whether they looked at us also, but we think they did. Then one day, they came close to the hedge and suddenly they turned to us. They turned in a whirl and the movement of their body stopped, as if slashed off, as suddenly as it had started. They stood still as stone and they looked straight upon us, straight into our eyes. There was no smile on their face and no welcome, but their face was taut and their eyes were dark. Then they turned as swiftly and they walked away from us. But the following day, when we came to the road, they smiled. They smiled to us and for us, and we smiled in answer. Their head fell back and their arms fell, as if their arms and their thin white neck were stricken suddenly with a great lassitude. They were not looking upon us, but upon the sky. Then they glanced at us over their shoulder, and we felt as if a hand had touched our body, slipping softly from our lips to our feet. Every morning thereafter, we greeted each other with our eyes. We dared not speak. It is a transgression to speak to men of other trades, save in groups at social meetings. But once, standing at the hedge, we raised our hand to our forehead and then moved it slowly, palm down, towards Liberty 5 3000. Had the others seen it, they could have guessed nothing, for it looked only as if we were shading our eyes from the sun. But Liberty 5 3000 saw it and understood. They raised their hand to their forehead and moved it as we had. Thus, each day, we greet Liberty 5 3000 and they answer, and no men can suspect. We do not wonder at this new sin of ours. It is our second transgression of preference, for we do not think of all our brothers as we must, but only of one, and their name is Liberty 5 3000. We do not know why we think of them. We do not know why, when we think of them, we feel of a sudden that the earth is good and that it is not a burden to live. We do not think of them as Liberty 5 3000 any longer. We have given them a name in our thoughts. We call them the Golden One. But it is a sin to give men names which distinguish them from other men. Yet we call them the Golden One, for they are not like the others. The Golden One are not like the others. And we take no heed of the law, which says that men may not think of women, save at the time of mating. This is the time each spring, when all the men older than 20 and all the women older than 18 are sent for one night to the city palace of mating. And each of the men have one of the women assigned to them by the Council of Eugenics. Children are born each winter, but women never see their children, and children never know their parents. Twice have we been sent to the palace of mating, but it is an ugly and shameful matter of which we do not like to think. We have broken so many laws, and today we have broken one more. Today, we spoke to the Golden One. The other women were far off in the field when we stopped at the hedge by the side of the road. The Golden One were kneeling alone at the moat which runs through the field. Then the Golden One saw us, and they did not move, kneeling there looking at us. Circles of light played upon their white tunic, from the sun on the water of the moat. Then the Golden One rose and walked to the hedge, as if they had heard a command in our eyes. The two other street sweepers of our brigade were a hundred paces away down the road, and we thought that International 48818 would not betray us, and Union 53992 would not understand. So we looked straight upon the Golden One, and we saw the shadows of their lashes on their white cheeks, and the sparks of the sun on their lips, and we said, you are beautiful, Liberty 5 3000. What is your name? 
Equality 72521. You are not one of our brothers, Equality 72521, for we do not wish you to be. No, nor are you one of our sisters. If you see us among scores of women, will you look upon us? We shall look upon you, Liberty 53000, if we see you among all the women of the earth. Are street sweepers sent to different parts of the city, or do they always work in the same places? They always work in the same places. No one will take this road away from us. Your eyes are not like the eyes of any among men. And suddenly, without cause for the thought which came to us, we felt cold, cold to our stomach. How old are you? They understood our thought, for they lowered their eyes for the first time. Seventeen. And we sighed, as if a burden had been taken from us, for we had been thinking without reason of the palace of mating, and we thought that we would not let the Golden One be sent to the palace. How to prevent it we knew not, but we knew suddenly that we would. We do not know why such thought came to us, for these ugly matters bear no relation to us and the Golden One. What relation can they bear? Still, without reason, as we stood there by the hedge, we felt our lips drawn tight with hatred, a sudden hatred for all our brother men. And the Golden One saw it and smiled slowly, and there was in their smile the first sadness we had seen in them. We think that in the wisdom of women, the Golden One had understood more than we can understand. Then the sisters of the field appeared, coming towards the road, so the Golden One walked away from us. Liberty 5 3000? They threw the seeds into the furrows of the earth as they walked away, but the seeds flew wildly, for the hand of the Golden One was trembling. Yet as we walked back to the home of the street sweepers, we felt that we wanted to sing, without reason. So we were reprimanded tonight in the dining hall, for without knowing it, we had begun to sing aloud some tune we had never heard. But it is not proper to sing without reason, save at social meetings. We are singing because we are happy. Indeed you are happy. How else can men be when they live for their brothers? And now, sitting in our tunnel, we wonder about these words. It is forbidden not to be happy. Men are free, and the earth belongs to all men. And the will of all men together is good for all. And so, all men must be happy. Yet, as we stand in the great hall preparing for sleep, we look upon our brothers and we wonder. The heads of our brothers are all bowed, their eyes are dull, and never do they look one another in the eyes. A word steals into our mind as we look upon our brothers, and that word is fear. Fear.